Hello, I'm Pastor Mark of the Little Book Presbyterian Church. I'd like to invite you to spend the next few moments with me reflecting together on God's Word. Today, we'll be taking a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. And we also thank God continually, because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone. In their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved, in this way they heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. Paul is acknowledging here that there is a built-in offense to the gospel. So much so that not only when some people hear the gospel do they reject it for themselves personally, but they become so offended that they actively work against the people who are attempting to share and spread the gospel. Paul gives thanks that the Thessalonians heard the gospel and received it not as a human argument or human wisdom, but as God's word, which is what it actually is. He recounts that in other areas, it has been the Jews that have fought against the gospel. Not all Jews, clearly, because many Jews have heard the gospel and received the gospel and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Paul being a perfect example of that. And yet it has been in some other communities, the Jews who did not receive the gospel, not only rejected it, but worked hard to keep Paul and other missionaries from sharing the gospel. Here Paul points out that in the case of the Thessalonians, it's not the Jews who are really causing the church problems but other non-Jews, other Gentiles who have rejected the gospel and are working against it personally. So this is a great reminder that it's not Jews that are enemies of Christ. It's not Gentiles who are enemies of Christ, but there will be people of all backgrounds, of all faiths, of all lack of faith, some of whom who will hear the gospel and not only reject it, but work against it. And so as Christians, as those who seek to spread the gospel, we need to be prepared to face that type of opposition, not be surprised by it. But something else Paul shares with us in another passage, in Romans 10, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. And this reminds us that we should not only be prepared for opposition and be prepared that people will actively work against our attempts to spread the gospel, but instead of seeing them as our enemies, or instead of praying bad things to happen to them. Our prayer for them should be the same as Paul's prayer for them, and that is that the Holy Spirit would ultimately work a life-changing event in their life, and that they would hear the gospel afresh, receive the gospel, and be saved. For it is God's desire, as God's word says, that none should be lost. So let's pray that instead of 
those who appear to be working against us would simply go away or stop working against us. May our prayer continue to be that they would be saved and join us in our crusade to share the gospel throughout all of creation. Thank you for spending this time with me today, reflecting on the Word of God for the people of God.